die. You know that I. You know that I fly away, oh glory. I fly away in the morning when I hallelujah. You know that I fly away. To God be the glory. Uh, to God be the glory. Certainly we're thankful to the Almighty God again for another opportunity to come into the sanctuary of God. That we might come into his house. That we might uh, lift up the mighty name of Jesus. To come together that we might uh, study another portion of the divine word which God has left upon the pages of inspiration. So thankful to God for he so loved us that he sent his only begotten son that he might die for the world. Is that all right? I thank God that he loves us and he continues to love us even in spite of, even in spite of us. God still love you. Aren't you glad this morning? Aren't you glad that God still love you? Amen. Ain't that a good feeling? To know, to know the wretched man that I am, that God still, he still loves me. He still cares for me. He still looks out for me. Certainly we ought to be thankful unto God. Once again, thank those who have stood before us in our devotional service. Uh, indeed, you have done an, a wonderful job, amen, in our song service, in the reading of the text, and he that led our hearts to the, to the throne. God, uh, God again, is, he's, he's good, and it's good always to see everyone who have graced our audience. Let us stay prayed up for those that are traveling, those that are out sick, uh, and those that are preaching and teaching the word of God. Amen, amen, amen. It seems like every Lord's Day we've got one or two preachers on the uh, Amen. <laughs> that speaks well, somebody. I, I know we miss our brethren, and, uh, but it speaks well of this church. Uh, that folk uh, look out and look at us and, 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 and can count on men that will come and stand Boldly on the word of God. You, you got to know, if, them, if, if these guys ain't teaching and preaching in the right way, they not going to be called. <laughs> amen, amen. That just gives you uh, uh, the idea or uh, gives you the knowledge that they are indeed staying in the book. And that's all we can ask, that if we stay, if we stay in the book. Amen. Amen, amen. Again, we're, it's just good to be here. I'm not going to hold you long. We know that there are activities on, uh, on today, and uh, we want to be mindful of, of your time. But there, there is indeed a word from the Lord. Good to have Brother and Sister Story back with us. Amen. Again, we want them to know that they have been missed over these past few weeks. Amen. And it's always good to have them back in the house with us. Uh, as I endeavor to uh, bring this series of lesson a little closer to its conclusion, been dealing with Paul and the young preacher by the name of Timothy. Paul, the age apostle, begins to give final instructions to the young evangelist Timothy. For Timothy, Brother Pele, is approaching his graduation. He has been under the tutelage, under the instructions, under the training, under the advisement, and under the guidance of the age Apostle Paul. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, in verse number 1, Paul gives Timothy his final charge, 
he says, I charge thee. Is that all right? Therefore before God. And the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead, and his superior and his kingdom. Paul gives him the final charge. How impressive is this charge from the weary, worn, war-torn apostle as he stands on the edge of the grave. In this final charge, he exhorts the young preacher again to preach Preach the word. Is that all right? He says, be instant in season and out of season. He said, you got to reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. Is that all right? He says, for the time will come when men will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. Just reminded us on last week at the times we are living in. Paul said they are perilous times. They're dangerous times. He even says to Timothy, they're going to be those that turn away from the truth. Those that will not adhere to the doctrine of Christ. Those that want to hear something Isaiah said a long time ago that itches their ears. They shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch this admonishment. He said, but be watchful. Ain't that what he told him? In all things. In other words, you, you got to have your head on a pedestal where it just swivels around and you got to be able to see everything. He said, be watchful. I, I heard him in 1 Corinthians chapter 16 when he told him to stand fast in the faith. Be ye strong, quit ye like men. But he says to the young preacher, you got to stand strong. He says, not only shall you watch in all things, he said, but you got to endure affliction. Uh, what are you saying? He's saying to the young preacher, this thing ain't going to be easy. There, there are going to be some consequences. There are going to be some grave situations. There are going to be some things that befall you that you're going to have to stand on. You're going to have to be steadfast. You're going to have to be unmovable. And you're going to have to be abounding in the work of the Lord. Be watchful, son. Or do affliction. Do the work. I said do the work of an evangelist. And make full proof. Amen. You got to know that. That's a tough one right there. He said you got to make full proof of your ministry. In other words, don't live where somebody can always have an accusation, hello somebody, have an accusation against you, but make full proof of your ministry. Be strong in those things that you have heard of me and give them to those that are faithful. He said, those no, you have seen many witnesses that you have seen of me. Paul said, you got an example of how to do. I see Timothy, I see Timothy walking across the stage, ready to his, receive his diploma of spiritual, hello, y'all. He's come to a point now where uh, Paul has fed him. Paul has poured out his soul. Now this young man is about to go out and he's about to begin to evangelize. He's about to teach the word of God. He's about to endure to build on God's kingdom. Amen. Amen. You see, you can't stay in school forever. Hello, somebody. At some point, you got to be ready 
to come out and go to work. Is that all right? But I like, I like Timothy. Paul knew how to train a man. Paul not only was waiting on his graduation, but Paul also had him on some on-the-job on training. Is that all right? He left him in some places where he knew he would need some advice. He knew that he would have to be admonished. He knew that he would have to be encouraged in what he would go through. But he told him, be strong. Endure as a good soldier. Ain't that what he told him? Amen. Stand your ground. Amen. When it comes to the spiritual education, edification of the Lord. Amen. How impressive is this charge? The final charge. The final charge. Preach. Preach the word. Now, Paul, and I'm almost through, takes center stage in verse number six. Just like Joshua, who would go the way of the earth, Paul also knew his time was drawing near. Not like Joshua, who would go of old age, but Paul would grow, go rather under different circumstances. Am I right about it? You got to know in this last epistle to Timothy, Paul is in prison in Rome. But he says these words. For I am now ready. That in your Bible? He said, for I am now ready to be offered up. Is that what he said? And the time of my departure is is at hand. He's ready to be offered up, Brother Story. He makes reference to being offered up as a pulling out, as an offering, as, 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 as having his blood shed. He says, I'm ready to be offered up. The time of my departure, death a uh, uh, Paul was just simply a departure. It was a leaving of the body in this world for a better state. Is, is that all right? Paul already said, for, for, for me to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Paul already knew that when I have to leave, it's going to be all right because I'm in the hands of a good God. Paul said, I have done what my assignment has been unto me. I have done the best I could with all that God has given me, even though, amen, even though I was not perfect, but I tried to do what I could do. He says, even though I knew who I was, I was nothing but a, a blasphemer. I was injurious. He said, I didn't even deserve to have this position. But God loved me, seen enough in me to put me in this position. Paul said, I, I've tried to do the best I can. I've labored. I've been called the least of the apostles. But Paul said, that's all right. I am still the servant of God. Is that all right? Paul said, I, 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 I'm ready to be offered up. Let me show you the picture that it, it, it shows in my mind, Brother Daniel, when he says I'm ready to be offered up. Paul said, I give myself for the Lord. I don't care what the Emperor Nero has for me because I know that I have gave all that I could give. Paul said, even when I was doing it the wrong way, even when I was doing it out of ignorance, 
I gave it all that I had. Hello, somebody. He said, I still, I served with vigor. I served with zeal. Even though it was in the wrong way, I served God. Because I thought the Jewish law was right. I, I thought what Moses said applied to me. And when I seen folk going the other way, I wanted to do something about it. He said, I was even at the foot of Stephen when they stoned him. I held his coat. But when the Lord knocked me down on the Damascus road, showed me a, hello y'all, blinded me. And when I woke up, the scales fell off my eyes. I was ready to go to work. Paul said, I, 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 I've been offered up. The time of my departure is at hand. He went on to say, I, 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 I fought him. Ain't that what he said? You see, Paul knew that his death had been predetermined by his enemies. And he knew that it was near. You, you, you got to know, this is his second imprisonment at Rome. Yeah. This is the second time. Yes, he, 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 he's under house arrest. He's able to have companions come by. He's able to be able to read and to move around. But he already knows his faith has already been sealed. Amen. Amen. Somebody said Nero's. Got a chopping block. Waiting on the apostle Paul. Paul has been brought before the emperor Nero. And, 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 and Paul knows that his life is in danger. And so he has to make his final and last plea to his young preacher. Is that all right? But I like what he says. And I use for my subject. I'm ready. I'm ready. That's good news, ain't it? I wish all of us could say at this point we ready. Amen. We, we, we got to get ready, y'all. If we're not ready, we better be preparing to get ready because the Bible said we know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall come. It, it behooves us to, to be ready. Is that all right? Amen, amen. The strong man would not have left the thief come and break in his house if he knew he was coming. He would have been, he would have been ready. Jesus said, be, be ready, be ready, be ready. Amen, because we know not the day nor the hour when the Son of Man shall come. My subject, Paul says to us, I'm ready. He didn't say that. Brother Larry, I want to be ready. He didn't say I'm getting ready. He never said I hope to be ready. But Paul says I'm, I'm ready to be offered up. You know, you know, you got to be in a good place with the Lord. I said you got to be in a good place with the Lord when you just tell him I'm ready. And there'll be no reservations in your heart and in your mind. You got, hello, y'all. You got to be in a good place when you can just say, Lord, I'm ready. Come and get me. Amen. We might say that, but how many times do we really mean that? Amen. We'll say all the time, if the Lord come and get me right now, I'll be ready. Let's be honest. Ain't nobody ready. Hello, y'all. Ain't nobody ready. But we better be getting ready. Is that all right? If we want to go to a prepared place, we got, ain't that right? Jesus said, I go to a prepared place for you. And somebody told me that that prepared place is for a prepared people. And so that means we got to, we got to be ready. I said, we got to be ready. Allow me real quickly to just highlight three terms of decoration that the Apostle Paul made. You already know him and you already see him. Paul said, I'm ready to be offered up. The time of my departure is at hand. But let me declare to you that I have fought, I have fought 
a good fight. I have finished my course. And I have kept, I kept the faith. Amen. You know, you know, I, I, I used to get that kind of backwards. And I just thought, Brother Pele, that it didn't really mean nothing how you put it in line. But as the more I study, I believe they are in that alignment for a purpose. Paul said, I, 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 I fought a good fight. Yes, if I would have kept the faith, surely I finished my course. But I stopped by to tell you, I finished my course because I kept, I kept the faith. I, I believe scripture aligns those three for a reason. A, a, amen. I have, Paul said, I fought a, a good fight. I've, I've stood on the battlefield for the Lord. Paul said, I've done all I could to bring the word of God to the Gentile, even to the Jews, to the whole world. I've been to Asia. I've been to the Roman providences. Paul said, I've been everywhere preaching the gospel. I've written 13 epistles. Some were from prison. Paul said, I've tried to stand on the word of God. He said, I've been shipwrecked, I've been beaten, I've been left for dead. I had to come down a wall in a basket because my own people wanted to kill me. Paul said, I've been through a lot. I went down to Corinth trying to teach and preach at Corinth, and they loved the false teachers even more than they loved me. Paul said, I've been through some stuff. He said, I, 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 I even give my body to be burned. He said, I, I even, <clears throat> Paul said, I fought a, I fought a good fight. He said, all right. I established churches. I went back to check on the churches. I even exhorted brothers. I called brothers in their positions. I even had to stand face to face with my own brother. Paul said, I fought a good fight. Is that all right? You, 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 you got to know Paul gets this analogy from the Grecian's game. You know, uh, uh, when you ran into the cathedrals and to the Colosseum, there were always these games where y'all done seen Hercules and Samson when, 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 when there uh, uh, came out these men that were these gladi and what they call gladiators fighting against each other, and they even had to sometimes fight wild animals, and all through that, Paul looks at this, and, and, and from that standpoint, Paul said, I fought a good fight. He said, I, I fought a good fight. He said, I finished, I finished my course. That simply comes from the analogy of the Grecian game, too, when there was always a race. You, you, you see, when you would line up to a race, you know, the object of the race when you run in a physical race, Paul said the object is to win the crown. But when you run in the spiritual race, the object is to finish finish the course. Is that alright? I, 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 I hear one writer say the race ain't to the swift, nor is it to the strong. He said, but it is him that endure to the end. Paul said, I fought a good fight, y'all. I, 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 I finished my course. I, Paul said, I'm on my way, y'all. I'm on my way to Nero chop. Do you know what I mean when I say Nero chopping block? Paul getting ready to get his head cut off. Amen. For the cause and the love of Christ. Paul went before judges and he went before kings. And all Paul had to do Amen. It's just be there. But Paul made the plea to go to Rome to see Caesar. They said, Paul, if you had not made this plea, we could have let you go. But since you have asked to go to Rome to Caesar, you got to go. Hello, somebody. I, 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 I just want you to know that he's sharing this with Timothy. And, 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 and if you give me one more week, if it be the Lord's will, I'll close out this series. And I want to use for my subject, 
come before winter, but that's next week. Amen. But this week I want to deal with I'm ready. I, 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 I'm ready to be offered up. Time of my departure is at hand. I will tell you, I declare to you, I fought a good fight. I finished my course and I have kept, I kept the faith. It is through the faith that Timothy had in the word of God. It is through the faith that he had in Jesus. It is through the faith who he had in Yahweh. It is the faith who he had in God that he was able to stand the test. He was able to stand the test. I'm ready. Paul says to the young preacher, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready. When God calls me, I'm going to be ready. Is that all right? We, we, we need to be getting ready. In so many aspects, we need to be ready. We need to be ready. The Bible says we ought to be ready always to give an answer of the hope that lies within us. Somebody says, uh, uh, Brother Thompson, you are a member of the Church of Christ. What, why are you a member of the Church of Christ? I need to be ready. I said I need to be ready to give an answer. Am I right about it? Of that hope that, that, that lies with, with, within me. I, I, I need to be ready. Even when it comes down to being ridiculed, when it comes down to being ostracized, when it comes down to being criticized, I need to be ready. Amen. Paul was ready unto death. Over there in Acts chapter 21, I think it was, when, when Paul was coming into uh, 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 Caesarea and, and the Bible said there was a prophet by the name of Agabus and Agabus came to Paul and he girded himself and, 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 and it said that if he girded himself that for Paul not to go to Jerusalem. He said, Paul, don't you go to Jerusalem? I, 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 what he said, don't go to Jerusalem. He said, they're going to kill you when you go to Jerusalem. Paul said, I go back. Not only do I go back, Paul said, ah, but I'll even die. I'm ready. That's what he said. I'm ready to go bound to Jerusalem. Not only am I ready to go bound, but I'm ready to die. If I have to die for the Lord. Is, is that all right? Paul said, to live is Christ, but to die is gain. Paul said, I'm ready, y'all. I'm ready. I've been here for a long time. I've seen a lot of stuff. Is that all right? I've been treated a lot of ways. But now, I'm ready to be offered up. Pull me out as an offering. Pull me out as a blood offering. Because now I'm ready. I'm ready. I, 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 I stopped by to encourage us this morning that we ought to get ready. And then we ought to get ready. We ought to start walking according to God's rule. We ought to start living the best we can. So when our time comes, we will. We will be ready. We'll be ready because let me tell you something. One day, one day we all going to have to stand. I said we all going to have to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Is that all right? We're going to judge by all the things we have done in this present body, whether they be good or whether they be bad. Uh, 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 the, the writer says, uh, 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 because at the word of God, every knee shall bow and every tongue going to have to confess. There's, there's a time of reckoning, y'all, and that time is coming soon. Is that all right? And I want us all to be just like Paul. I want us to all be ready. And you know how you can be ready? Can I, can I have about four more minutes? You want to know how you can be ready? You got to fight a good fight. You got to stand on the oracles of God. You got to stand on the principle of God's word. And then when something comes to you, you got to know that you got to be steadfast. Anybody, anybody in here steadfast? You got to be steadfast, unmovable, always work. 
working and abounding in the work of the Lord. You got to be like Paul when he told the Roman brethren, he said, I ain't nothing going to separate me from the love of God. Shall tribulation, shall trial, shall distress, shall all of these things, nothing shall separate me from the love of God. I'm going to keep on fighting. I said, I'm going to keep on fighting. I, I'm going to keep on fighting. I'm going to keep on running. I'm going to keep on going to war. I'm going to keep on doing whatever I have to do to finish my course. Paul could have easily said, I, I, ain't, I ain't fooling with this no more. He could have easily said, these folk don't care nothing about me. All I try to do for the church, and then they still act a fool. Hello, y'all. They still lacking the food. He said, I have been spent, and I am gladly spent. Paul said, I'm giving it all to you. And here come a false prophet out of nowhere, and you hug him. Hello, somebody. Paul said, but I keep on fighting. Hello, somebody. I said, I keep on fighting. And I'm going to fight to the end. I'm going to finish my course. Is that all right? I'm reminded when I was a junior in high school and, 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 and in the state finals for the track meet and I, I was running the 220 Pele and, 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 and I got off to a good start. But I stumbled. And that boy from Pearl, uh, Brother Williamson, well, well, his Williamson, I'll never forget it. He came by me like a light. And I could not catch him. I said I could not catch him. I knew I wasn't going to catch him because me and him probably were some of the fastest ones in the state of Tennessee that year. And I could not catch him. But I did not give up. I kept on running, Brother Joe. I kept on running and I finished. I finished my course. I did not get the crown. But in this race, I said in this race, it don't matter if you get in before I get in. It don't matter if you receive yours before I receive mine. Because if we love the Lord, Paul said, henceforth it laid up for me. Crown of righteousness, the righteous judge. I, I feel it coming on, y'all. That give me it that day. Not only to me only, but to all who love his appearing and his coming. I stop by to tell you, if you want your crown, you got to keep on fighting. You got to finish your course. And you'll never finish your course unless you keep the faith. Is that all right? I said, you got to keep the faith. I, I, Paul said, I'm ready now. I, I, I done done all I can do. I'm ready now. I'm, I'm laying in my prison now. Now all I need is a little consoling. He said to Timothy, I need some stuff. I tell y'all about that next week. Yeah, I need some stuff. I, I need you to come and spend just a little bit of time with me. Let me say this to you. When your folk get old, try to spend some time with them. Hello, y'all. That's way off the beaten path, but uh, I think I need to say that. When, 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 when folk get old in age, hey, we need to, hello, y'all. Paul said, all I've done for you boys and all that I've tried to teach you boys, I need somebody to come and sit with me and bring my books and bring my coat in because there are some that have abandoned me. There are some that have left for the world, but I need you, Timothy. To come. Is that all right? He said, come before winter. Amen. Winter is the... Whew, I can't go over there. I'm ready. I, I, I'm, I'm ready. It, 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 it's up to us to get ready. Is that all right, y'all? I, I, I know this lesson don't make you shout, but it ought to make you think about getting ready. <laughs> It, it, it ought to make you think about getting ready. And what I love about the Sunday school this morning, somebody made the, uh, 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 somebody made the statement about we ought to be setting things in order. Hello, y'all. We ought to be setting things in order for those who are coming up after us that they may have a foundation to stand on, that they might be able to have something to carry on a little bit further. Let me say this. Every generation ought to be better than the last generation. We, we sometimes seem like we're going backwards 
instead of going forward. And as long as we don't leave something, hello, y'all. As long as we don't leave something, that's what's going to happen. We're going to go backwards instead of forward. Amen. Paul said, I'm ready, y'all. I'm ready to go on home to the Lord. I, I know, I know that it's a better place. <laughs> Is that all right? It, it's a better place. It's a better place. This morning, this morning, I'm going to leave you with that. Uh, continue to fight the good fight of faith. And let me say to the brothers, stand strong. Stand strong. Quit ye like men. In other words, give it to God. Amen. Give it to God. And grow not weary in well-doing, but continue, continue to fight the good fight of faith. This morning, if you're not a member of the blood bought institution, the church that Jesus, uh, that Jesus established uh, on the day of Pentecost through his word, when he came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, when he asked the disciples, who do men say that I, the son of man, am? And they began to ponder one amongst another. And they said, thou, uh, 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 John the Baptist and Elijah, Jeremiah. And somebody said, you might just be a prophet. And he looked down and he said, but who say ye that I am? My buddy Peter stood up. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he says to Peter, blessed art thou, Simon, by Jonah. For flesh and blood has not revealed it unto thee, but my Father, which is in heaven. And he said, upon this rock, I will build. He said, I will build my church. And the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And he says to Peter, I'm going to give you the keys to the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever you shall bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever you shall loose on earth shall be loosed in heaven. That was the promise. The, 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 the coming in of the church was on the day. Oh, I need some help. It was the day of Pentecost when Peter again stood up and preached. Didn't he preach? Oh, Peter went deep, y'all. Peter didn't leave no meat on the bone. He went down and got Moses. He got David. He got all the patriarchs. He came on up through history. Then the Jews, they looked at him and he said, they said to him, men and brethren, what shall we do? Is that all right? Peter said, you got to repent and be baptized. Every one of you. Is that what he said? Not just some of you, but every one of you. Amen. You shall. You shall be baptized for the remissions of your sin. And you shall receive the gift. The gift of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. But when that word was preached on that day, Brother Story, they heard them all in their own language. They said to the man, what is wrong with these boys this morning? Junior said, they drunk. <laughs> they got to be drunk. He said, uh, they drunk on new wine. He said, how can that be? It's just 9 o'clock in the morning. Well, I know some folks would be drunk by 9 o'clock, but these men... We're not drunk, but they will feel, I said they will feel with the Holy Spirit. Ain't that good news? They will feel with the Holy Spirit. And that same day, that same day, 3,000, hello somebody, 3,000 stepped out, amen, and became members of the Church of Christ. Somebody might want to step out this morning and become a member of the Church of Christ. You come by the hearing of the word, believing in the same, repenting of your sin, confess Jesus to be the divine Son of God, go down in the water of grave of baptism for the remissions of sin. When you come up out of the water, the Bible declares you are a new creature in Christ Jesus. Old things would have passed away. Behold, all things shall be, shall be new. And just walk circumspectly until Christ comes back, according to Revelation 2 and 10. He said, I, I, I be thou faithful unto death, 
and I give you a crown. That's what Paul said. Paul said, uh, 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 there's a crown laid up for me. Aren't you glad you got a crown? Billy, ain't you glad you got a crown? It's laid up waiting on you. It is incorruptible. It fades not away. It's your inheritance. Can't nobody, oh, Lord, can't nobody, can't nobody beat you out of here. It's yours. God got it for you. Hello, somebody. If you have obeyed, but straight away, come on back and get right with God. If you need prayer, we'll pray for you. While together we stand and sing the invitation song. Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you fully trusting in His grace this hour? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you washed in the blood, in the soul-cleansing blood of the Lamb? Are your garments spotless? Are they white as snow? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you walking daily by the Savior's side? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Are you are you washed in the blood? Oh, oh, cleansing blood. Are your garments spotless? Are they white? Oh, are you washed in the blood of the Lamb?